Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's the Tool of Arts. My name's Chuck. I'm Lou. I'm the better looking of Tool of Arts on most days. But uh, today, you say you're not feeling too well. You say you're days. not doing too well. It's one of those days when you put up with this right here. Sometimes you get it tight. Sometimes you have to work loose. It just. So what kind of pain have you been having? Hmm? It just. Little... What kind of pain are you having? Just every now and then when I move it, just. It just depends on how I move it and stuff like that. I get a little sharp twing or ting or whatever you want to call it. I go back to my doctor tomorrow. So it's just what I, my physical therapist said. It's just part of the things you do and you know, you try not to move it and, and stuff. So it's going to, it's just one of those things that you go through. Could be so this is probably one of the main reasons why you guys have not seen or heard of us in a couple of weeks, probably a month now, because, yeah. you know, you just ain't been feeling too well. You know, you, your tooth, and then you had the surgery on your hand, and you've been kind of recovering from that. Well, tell us about that process. Do I? Tell us about the process that, you know, that's been going on in the last month since you had the, the surgery on your hand and the recovery and all of that. Yeah, you're not supposed to do things with your hand. You're supposed to keep it elevated. Sometimes you forget, you know, you, just like the other day, I was out in the backyard just walking around and just not doing much of anything, but it's hanging down, right? And it's, it's going right. down and come in the house and so. It swells up a little bit? It swells up a little bit. And my physical therapist told me the other day, you know, I need to watch how much I do that and stuff like that and I start massaging it. So she had me buy some vitamin E cream. You know, the, the wounds are healed. You know, the, it's healing good. It just takes time. And I have to take it off a couple times a day and use that cream on it to around the, uh, where the sutures were and stuff like that and massage it. And once I massaged it, uh, the little swelling went down. It, it's just, one of the things you got to live with. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to be better when it's all over. But it, Have you been using heat, heat and ice alternating? No, I don't do that uh, because I, I have to wear this this brace all the time. One time I take it off. Now when I take a shower, I took it yesterday. Was the first time I took a shower without it being wrapped, you know, in a plastic bag or something. I actually felt pretty good. So. Uh, I'm hoping that was that will happen. You know the water running on it from the shower. It had to kind of like I massage it just a little bit, and then when I massage it, just because I she she told me to wear this thing tight, not for it loose, because she don't want the thumb to move out of the location and stuff. So I'm sure it's more when I go back. I'll I'll have more details from my doctor and, and stuff like that. Uh oh. I lost you for I, a yeah, second. Yeah, my video. Did, did it come back? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because it went out for me too. I don't know what was going on. And other than that, I didn't tell you, Bond, this I, when I was in the backyard. I, you know, those little lawn chairs that, that we got, the, the, right. the linen frame. So I moved one of those just to sit down and had a real sharp pain. And, and this, I think that kind of aggravated my arm just you know, underneath the the form just a little bit so you just got to be careful what you do i know and then to hear you tell me right before we started you know that you just weren't feeling that well because i was trying to help you troubleshoot the uh, the headphone issue again and you're like i just don't want to mess with it right now so i can yeah. tell you ain't feeling too well of course it, it don't help I was my alabama softball team Guess who they got beat by? They were in the Bevo tournament. This they lost season. to Auburn. No. Texas, yeah. State beat, Texas State beat us in the softball game. Texas <laughs> beat us one game, and Wisconsin beat us one game. But Alabama now, basketball won. And while we're playing A&M now for the SEC championship, you know, for the tournament championship. And, uh, right. We won yeah, the we SEC. Beat, uh, who did we beat yesterday? We beat Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're, I uh, turned it off a few minutes ago, we were leading AM by 13. So. Yeah, it's 34 23 right now. At yeah, that so. time. 
and we're right now we're one of four in the top seed, top top four seed. So for the uh, NCAA tournament, so we'll see. I was saying yesterday that uh, we still might be the number one seed after the tournament, despite what happens. Yeah. So. Well, I think we will. If we don't, we don't win the SEC tournament, I think we'll still hang in there as number one seed overall. Uh, they got them playing pretty good basketball. But Texas State is playing uh, Texas in softball this afternoon, so I got to give a shout out to McKenzie and her team up there. Yeah, she just spent the night here last night. Uh, she was dropping off the cat before they head out to the coast. We're going to South Padre Island for spring break. So what are you going to do for spring break? Uh, my oldest daughter and four grandkids are coming in this evening. Yeah, what time are they supposed to get here? I don't know. They don't They don't text me to let me know when they're on the road. Or whatever time the doorbell rings, right? Yep, whatever time they get here, that's when they'll be here. Well, what, what we got planned for them? I, I, Dad, I don't know. I've texted them. I've tried to get a little bit of a conversation going. I haven't heard nothing from them. So we'll play it by year. I think they're heading back out Wednesday. Yeah. So they'll be here tomorrow, and all day tomorrow and, and Tuesday. Tuesday. So hopefully one of those days we guys can have you guys over as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm anticipating one of these days, maybe when you guys come over, that pizza oven that I have. It's a uni outdoor pizza oven that maybe we could all make our own pizzas. I got oh, that'd be nice. the dough. I got the dough. It's in the freezer. We just need to let let it sit overnight and let it proof. We can spread it out, put sauce, put whatever toppings you guys want on it, put it in the oven. And it'll cook for like a minute or two. We just turn it once or twice. Like two minutes later, it's done. Is that what that picture you had on Facebook it looked like? A, a, an oven? No, that's a chimney. Okay. That's a chimney. But it, cool. the oven is right next to that on that uh, okay. little shelf. Okay. So were you and uh, Brenda drinking some margaritas out there by the fire? No. So <laughs> earlier, because we didn't go to Al Daco's for margaritas on Friday night because Mackenzie was coming Saturday. And she said, when I get there, I want to go to Al Daco's. She wants to have her tacos al pastor and she wants her margarita. So we waited till Saturday to do that. So Friday night, Brent and I went to the Copa Wine Bar and had pizza and wine and french fries. So last night, Mackenzie, we all went to Aldaco's, had they had margaritas, I had a margarita and some beers, and when I got back, I'm like, you know what? Let's keep the party going. Went out back, built the fire in the chimney. Once the fire got going, they came out. And we just kind of hung out out there for a little while until the fire started to die down. Oh, good. Fun times, memories. Yeah, Sometimes you gotta you gotta make them win where you can. Yeah, That's make them win the pizza season. oven. What was that? I said you make them when you can and keep them. So, yeah. Speaking of making memories, where were you and I a couple of weeks ago? Uh, we went to see Gene Watson, I think. Yeah, in the Braunfels. Yeah, at the Brontex Theater. <laughs> it was How good. Was it? Even with the even with the hail on the on the roof and uh, leaving in the rain, actually it wasn't too bad. I, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my father, who is as deaf as a door a doorknob, during the concert you could hear the hail hitting the roof. The band, it, they were in between songs and they were doing that banter between the band and the singer. And uh, the the guitar player's like, oh, don't mind that. That's just the hail coming down on the roof. And the singer was talking about damage to the bus and all of that. And then about five minutes later, you go, hey, what's that noise I'm hearing on the roof? <laughs> <laughs> and we already done told everybody that it's the hail. And you were like, oh. <laughs> it's like, you just then heard it. You got to remember, when you were hearing aids, they don't always do what they're supposed to do because you've got about four or five different damn things coming in here and you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Oh, my God. So, yes, people, it is <laughs> it is difficult as a child of an aging parent with hearing aids to be on the same level, especially when it comes to hearing. 
So we got we got people we got to work on our patience with our old folks because they don't always hear the way we hear. But hey, you. you did hear it, and yes. So tell them what happened after we decided we were going to leave because of the storms. When we went out to the lobby, what did we see? It was raining cats and dogs, and the damn train was passing by, so nobody could move across the train. <laughs> But, you know, that was a good thing because by the time the train got through, the rain kind of slowed down a little bit. So we so, had to walk in that rain, what, about two blocks to the pickup truck? Yeah. But that wasn't too bad because you had some shelter from some of the buildings and stuff like that. Yeah, there was awnings on quite a few of the buildings that we were walking yeah. under. So, but we didn't get wet. It just a, But you don't, you don't move so quick at your old age. It's kind of like. When I was a little kid, you having to grab my hand and like keep up. I was having to like turn around like, Dad, come on, keep up. <laughs> yeah, sometimes getting mad don't mean lose you. Anymore. <laughs> I know, but I didn't want to lose you. You're not going to lose. What did I tell you? As long as I can see you. As long as I can, as long as I can see you. Lose. It just takes me a while to catch up. That's all. But that's, that's just the way life is. Sometimes you. Win some, you lose some, the rest you get rained out, right? <laughs> you know, and that's probably one of the saddest things about getting older is it's, it's like more is taken away from you than what, you know, you deserve. So, well, we've got a good concert coming up. I'm looking forward to Rondo King. Yeah, that's at the end of this month, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be at the end of the month, and that's going to be at what, Floors? Yeah, is Mom coming to that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you told me I that. Thought I, I thought I invited her. Yeah. So I think she's going to enjoy his music. He's he, he puts on a good show. He's a good young singer. What little bit I've seen of him and uh, read about him and a couple of his songs I've listened to and uh, I really like. I, bought, I told you I bought that one single. I'll fly away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. He sang it for his sister and her when she was dying in the hospital. Pretty sad, but now I'm looking forward to it. You know. Uh oh. Oh well, what fell? Huh? I have no what idea. What fell? Oh, I maybe the little headsets slid down into the box, <laughs> into the basket. <laughs> Who knows? So speaking so, of headsets, people, when we, when we were getting started, we were just logged in, getting our our gear set up. He had his headphones on, and I could see him just like I see him now. And next thing you know, he does something I can't see him, but I can hear him click. <laughs> Clicking on the keyboard, and I'm like, Dad, Dad, what are you doing? I can't see you. Finally, he gets everything back up, and he's like, I can't hear you. And I'm like, so then I, I look at his equipment and how it's set up, and I'm like, you can't hear me because you're not listening. Your headphones aren't set up. It's coming through your speaker. And you're like, what? So I, I send him a text message, and he takes off his headphones, and he takes his hearing aid and puts it back on. He's like, I can hear you now. <laughs> hey, that's what makes life fun, right? I know, but that's when you were like, you didn't want to fool with this no more. This is working, so this is what we're going to do. See, one of these days I'll be gone and you'll be talking to Brenda and Mackenzie. Yeah, I'm going to miss you. And so I remember when. <laughs> but, you know, maybe if we only get 10 or 15, 20 downloads a month, you know what? If that's all it is, at least you and I will have this and it will live on forever. Yeah, that's just like, well, see, y'all can join. He was in the hospital. Yeah, you went there Tuesday, right? Tuesday, yeah. Uh, he's not doing too good. But you know what? We had a good time. Had a lot of members to share. You know, things like that. So that, that's, that's what life's all about. Made him feel good. And Uncle Leonard and uh, your mom and I. And <laughs> Joy. Your Uncle Joy hasn't changed. They told him he had to leave. He said, how long I got to stay here? How can I stay here? She said, you got to be going by midnight. He said, okay. So he, he had his car and he said, let me order some food. So he picks up his phone and orders a meal and stuff like that. So, but uh, I'll get joy. We just talk about the things. That one necklace your mom still has from 1965. Because when we went to town, he went with me. He was like five years old. He went with me to, um, I think it was Zell's, the name of the jury there in Phoenix City or in Columbus, you know, and 
but my mom had an account because I had a bite on her account because I didn't have any credit. But anyway, I bought the rings, and he said, my mom would like that. I mean, uh, my sister would like that. I said, like what, Joy? That necklace. So we ended up buying that necklace. I mean, the only thing you had to buy a new chain for it. So on the way home, Joy got to go to the bathroom. I think I've told this story before. Yeah. Uh, so we stopped this gas station. They had no toilet paper. Joy ain't put his pants on until he wiped. <laughs> so we <laughs> <laughs> set him up on the sink. You know, those rolled towels, you know, that you used to put the paper yeah. out, the cloth towels in a roller. <laughs> so yeah. I him up and wiped his butt with that. So he put his pants on. Joy. <laughs> Joy, Joy ain't going nowhere to get his butt wiped, you know. <laughs> so, uh, then listen to him and your mom and Joy talk about the things they did and with your Papa Charbonneau. The other, I got to tell you this. Do you know that when Lewis and, and Clark made the expedition, one of your distant, distant, distant uncles on the Charbonneau side was with that expedition? To Sant Shrovano. And he had the Indian bride that was, that Lewis and Clark t- was actually his wife. He had actually, I don't, I don't remember how the story goes, how he got her from the tribe. She was part Shoshone, but they took her with her. And he was actually married to her when they went on that, on the Lewis and Clark on the expedition. So interesting history. So we go all the way back. French Canadian and all that kind of stuff back to Lewis and Clark expedition on your mom on the Charbonneau side, which we're not related to, not by blood. No, not by blood. Yeah. So, but anyway, Joey, I, that, and all of, and all of those siblings. Uh, yep. Yeah. But as far as your mom is concerned, she's related because she's a Charbonneau. She was like ten months old, I think, when. Uh, your grandfather, uh, Charbonneau, and your grandma got married and stuff like that. But you would never know that she was not a real live Charbonneau. That's where family is supposed to be. Yeah. But that, that's pretty interesting. So what else did we do in New Braunfels well, before the show? Oh, we went to, hey, I forgot the name of that restaurant we went to. Uh, Krauss's. Krauss, yes. It's a German restaurant. Yep. What'd you have? I had uh, sausage. Sausage plate. It was pretty good, wasn't it? It was. And I like the sauerkraut was good, but the... Um, the red cabbage. The red cabbage, yeah. That's, I love that red cabbage. That's good stuff. Yeah, those had, potatoes. Potatoes are good. And had the shiner. No, we didn't have shiner. No, it didn't. We had that German beer that, that you gave me. That it was Hellas. It's it's a Hellas. The beer lesson that I don't pay attention to. I, I know. I'm just gonna see what I like on the menu, and if I'm with you, I'll just listen to what you so recommend. Speaking of, so speaking of the menu, did your son send you an email with the link to the restaurant and the and the menu before we went, like? Days before. Yeah, I'll let you do that. But you didn't look at the beer menu, did you? No. No. Because usually I'm going to get a Shiner or a Yingman, one of those two. But you're at a German restaurant, so you should <laughs> not get a Shiner or a Yingling because you can get those anywhere. You can't just go to any old German restaurant. Just think, it, just think how, much, how much more beer sales they could they could bring in if they had a little Shiner in there and a little, little Yingling. Dad, they had Shiner. They had Ying Wing. If you looked mm-hmm. at the menu, you would have seen that. Uh, I don't remember seeing that on the menu. But anyway, it was fun. That was so, a good meal. So what I asked, ladies and gentlemen, what I asked my dad was, was, what kind of a beer do you want? I said, kind. He said, shine or Ying Wing. I said, dad, <laughs> that's a brand, not a style. And he, and he looked at me kind of puzzled. I'm like, you have like lagers, pale ales, wit beers, ales, stouts, porters, IPAs, pilsners. And he's like, all I know is Shiner and Yingling. 
That's all. That's so, all the two that matters. One, of we're, we're to going you. to you. We're going to support that Texas Bureau County, and we're going to support that one for what Pennsylvania, I think it is. Yes, that's where Yingling is from. That's correct. We also to, have Kolsch, Bach, Dunkel, Cezanne, Bitters, Lambics, American Pale Ales, Triples, Doubles. Oh, Hellas, Steam Beer, Marzen, a Hellas. I got to support those um, two old companies. They're still going yeah, strong. So Hellas, a, a Hellas is a traditional German pale lager beer produced chiefly in southern Germany, particularly in Munich. The word can, but, hell, can be translated as bright or light or pale. Well, tell me about one of those, some of those trips you made when you were in Germany. Some of those restaurants you went to. Oh, man. Some, some of those you about the, Yeah, the Hofbrau House. Oh, my God, Dad. That is probably one of the best restaurants you will ever, ever go to. The Hofbrau House. It's in Munich. Um, let, me, let me see here. Let me see what I can read about it. Hofbrau House, Hofbrau. So when you went when you went there, did was it you and Brenda went, or you went by yourself with with your buddies? And from Italy, and we had gone up to Germany, and we were staying in Garmisch, and we decided to go to Munich for the day. And so we we got on the train, got to the train station in Munich, and then got on uh, uh, the U-Bahn. Or the Strassenbahn. I can't remember if it was uh, like a subway or uh, or a little tram or something. But we went into the heart of Munich and went down to the Hofbrau House. Um, what did I get? Um, it was. Uh, let me see if I can find the uh, the menu. Uh, let's see. Look up Hofbrau House. Menu. Opera House Munich menu. All right, the English menu. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. The specialties. Where was it? Was it veal? It was like an Einpar Wiener or something like that. Like they got sour brown beef goulash, boiled beef, chicken breast, a half of a roasted chicken. Um, yeah, they got pickled pig's knuckles. Can you believe that? Yep, they got suckling pig. Dude, they got all of that stuff. Uh, fried sausage with sauerkraut. See, it's strange uh, how, two, how menus across the, across the world don't really change a whole lot. No, they, they, they don't. Back in the day, your grandfather used to go down to Morgan Chambers. They had pickle pig, pig feet and knuckles and all that kind of stuff. Yep, 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 yep. A few slot machines in the back room back there. Play, play a little nickel dime quarter slots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can pull up the German menu here. I'm having a little bit of difficulty, but anyway. So, yeah, Brendan and I went there. I tell you what, man, that was probably one of the best meals I've ever had. The beer was cold. It was in one of those big, like, Half liter German beer steins and real heavy glass. Oh, it was just, oh, it was a great day. It was a magic. Just day. Yeah. I love German food, man. German food and probably Greek food are like my two favorites. And then right underneath that would probably be Mexican. And then in a close second would be Italian behind that. Yeah. Well, you, you definitely take out to your mom's side of the family. 
So yeah, so back to the food in the restaurant. So I sent you the menu so you could take a look at it. And and we had that that talk while we were there. Like, I need to get you to start trying different things because that'll give us something to talk about here on the podcast. So instead of getting this the same couple of things that you normally like to get because they're safe, maybe I'll order the safe thing and you can order a little bit out of my comfort zone food. And if, then if you don't like it after you've tried it, then we'll trade. How's that sound? Uh, probably not very good. But might you need good, to try it. It might be good for you. But you but you tried something a little bit different, though, at the Hofbrau, I mean, at the at Krauss's, and you did like it, didn't you? As long as you don't have any eggs in it, or if I see it, we'll probably be all right. A little chicken, I'll be all right. Not just got some beef and pork and so, so let's, that's it. let's try that going forward we can try to get you out of your comfort zone just a little bit we'll, we'll see so you can try something different we'll think? see that come on what was it what was the um the meal the meat that you had oh it was a schnitzel it was a, a jaeger schnitzel tell the people about that yeah that was pretty good uh, without the gravy though i can't, can't you can't do that gravy how big was that piece of schnitzel. It was pretty good. That was a huge piece though. I mean it was That's what I'm saying. How big was it? It was it took huge. up almost the whole plate, didn't it? Whole plate, yep. Yeah. So we'll we'll try. Yeah, it was pretty big. So So yeah, you could have ordered the schnitzel, just told them no no uh no gravy. No Jaeger sauce. It's okay. it, it's a brown mushroom gravy is what it is. So no mushrooms, no gravy. That's just yeah, like drinking. That's, that's that's just like drinking flour water. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Who don't like gravy? Well, you got to mix in some of the fat from the from the grease. Yeah, you can take the country from the boy, but you can't take the boy out of the country. Or something like that, right? Well, you don't eat like a country boy. I'll tell you that. I tell you, talking about eating buttermilk and. Uh, Bread or something. I uh, can't handle that buttermilk. But we used to do some sweet, sweet milk and cornbread, though. That was all right. Boy, your grandpa loved that buttermilk. Hey, for those who aren't country that may be listening to us, can you explain to people what sweet milk is? Sweet milk is regular milk. It's regular old whole milk, isn't it? Right. Sweet milk. That's what we call it back home because it's sweet. Because right? it ain't buttermilk. <laughs> it ain't buttermilk. And it also depends on what kind of cows you have. determines the taste of the milk. A Jersey cow will have a sweeter milk than uh, Holstein or some of the other uh, types of cows. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. Some people may not see the difference, but there, there's a little difference. You can tell the difference in the buttermilk and the butter when you turn the butter and stuff from the different cows. So, okay. If somebody disagrees with that, tell them call us in and let's have a little conversation around it. That'd be, that'd okay. be something. That'd be something. That would be interesting. And I found my notes the other day from when you and I were talking, so I'm going to go in and get on the do some stuff on these podcasts. Oh, the logins and all of that, yeah. all like right. for social media. Yeah. Now, uh, actually, I feel pretty good today. I don't know why today. I just. You know, one of those days when you just don't feel good. I mean, nothing yeah. in particular. Yeah, that that has happened, yeah. and it's okay that you don't feel good sometimes. Yeah. So. Oh, so but Tuesday. That's when you went to see Uncle Joey. What happened on Wednesday? Well, I don't remember Wednesday. You don't remember? See, a, well, because I forgot. No, I didn't remember until Thursday. We had uh, Jordan's birthday. Yeah, my granddaughter Jordan's birthday. Yeah, she had a good time. Went to uh, Tasha's Roadhouse. That's the tradition we always do. She always calls them right up and go to enjoy her birthday. And I, I don't know if I told you or not, but she got a new job here about a month or so ago. No, you didn't tell me. She is the recruiting coordinator at UTSA. Recruiting for what? What's she recruiting? 
recruiting for recruiting. Yeah, recruiting like like students. Campus and, huh? Like, like students, students to get yeah. them to come to UTSA. Yeah, it's a new position. Okay. Uh, so right now she's just in, in training and stuff like that, but uh, it's it's uh, interesting. Uh, real proud of her for doing that. So. Well, she didn't text me that when I when I texted her happy birthday. She didn't tell me. Well, uh, you know, Jordan, she she'll tell you when she sees you. Then I, then your mom will get mad at me for telling before she told you. But uh, she's a recruiting coordinator for for UTSA. A but good you position. just told me now. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you now. But but she still hasn't told me yet. So does that mean mom's gonna get mad at you for telling me? That's right. Because I suppose wait to let them tell you. Oh my god. <laughs> Family secrets. And then where were you Friday? We missed you at Stan's funeral. Dad, Friday, I was up to my neck at work. I could not get I away. I, was, I wasn't surprised, but I was very pleased. There was a huge turnout between the, the uh, VFW, DAV, and American Legion paid their final uh, tribute to, uh, to Stan. Uh, talked to his son just a little bit, and he, he remembers you. I can't remember if, if he graduated before you or you, you know, or at Lackland. I think you got him at school at Lackland together, right? His son, Stan's son. He went away again. When was yeah. going on? Well, uh, Stan's son. Were you, were you, I went to school at Lackland together, right? I don't remember him. I really don't. He remembers you. And I thought he said that he was like two years behind you or something like that. I can't remember. Or two years ahead of you. I can't remember. I, I, yeah, he was behind me. I just don't remember how, how many years. Yeah. And then uh, we presented Ann with a really nice flag uh, holder with an inscription for, you know, stamp from the DOV chapter. Patriot guards came by and uh, did a really nice tribute and the VFW had a tribute and the American Legion had a real nice tribute to him so fitting for for Stan yeah there's there's a lot going on at work um, I, I can't get into it but uh, yeah it's just been super busy we've been going 100 different mi- 100 miles an hour in 100 different directions I could imagine yeah, so. and the commander wasn't in that week, so myself and Rebecca and Ashley and a few of the other senior civilians, we were kind of like holding it down. So it was a last minute trip that the commander had to take. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I really did want to go to uh, to see Stan off. He, he was a, a great member of the DAV chapter. He was always fun to be around, always had something funny to say. Yes, he did. And uh, I, what I remember most was when we would go to Waterburger and do our recruiting event there, sometimes it would just be me and him. And we just had some good conversations, and and he had a little humor about him. And he didn't mind speaking up. You know, when we were talking at the services, a couple people reminded me that whenever some people would come in and didn't have the right hats on or something like that, he'd get on to them. Not, not having the right hat or whatever. That's why he was the sergeant at arms. Yeah, and we we had a lot of things in common. He was in the Air Force Office Special Investigation, and me working law enforcement. Of course, we didn't work together, but those two officers work closer to each other. They do work together. So a lot of the things that you guys start to investigate end up getting passed off onto OSI. Exactly. If it becomes um, a felony. Yeah. So, we'll miss Stan. Uh, he will be I, very missed. I'm, I'm just glad that we had a fitting uh, final salute for him. You know, so. And, and I, we have I th- another meeting this Saturday, right? Yes. Next, uh, yeah, this comes the 18th. Are they going to have chapter elections? We're supposed to have chapter elections. elections. Yes. And so. you're not going to run for president again? Yeah, our commander. 
Uh, one's enough. One's enough. Yeah. Leon Collins, I think, is going to be – he's the only one that – he's who I selected and recommended, and he's the only one on the list for, for commander, and I, I think Leon will do good. I, I, I like Leon. I think he's a, a good voice of reason, very much like yourself. I'm a go-getter like yourself. And uh, he has good contacts with Hilton Ferguson. I, I love that man. The more I'm around him, the more Hilton I'm too. Yeah, and uh, – he and uh, Jose tried to talk me into running again. He, <laughs> said, you know, it's a lot uh, of work. It's a lot it, of work. It is a lot of work. And uh, I, I think probably demand some of uh, We need to get some younger people in there doing some of the things uh, so we keep this thing going. Because DAV does a lot of good things for a lot of good folks. They know? do. They really do. Yeah. You know, one of the things I'm proud of, what we've got done, one of the legislative committees that I'm on, is veterans on toll roads. One half of Texas, veterans don't have to pay the use of the toll roads. The other half, you got to pay. It's just, and I understand the process, it's because they're individually owned and operated owned, by, yeah, by yeah, private companies. By the state a lot of times. But, uh, you know, if you're a disabled veteran and you and, you have the DV tags, you you should be able to go to and from your hospital because some of these guys drive quite a ways away to be able to get to the VA for the hospital or clinics or stuff like that. They shouldn't have to pay. Some of them aren't in a position where they can pay. And then there's such a disparity with the rates of, you know, that you get for mileage and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we we just I'm not getting into politics, but we just need to get people in and look at things. You guys are entitled, or the civil service workers are entitled to what about a five or six percent pay raise? Uh, think, it just depends on what Congress wants to give us. Yeah, I mean, but that's what's been proposed. Well, then other people are trying to reduce that. That's not right. Yeah, you, know, you should get what you earned. Well, there's there's good government service workers that work very hard, and there's some who, like you had told me when I was a young kid and you were working in uh, Warner Robins, some of the, the civil servants that you worked with, you said you didn't have very fond memories of. Yeah, but we got people like you, and I think there's a lot of folks like you that, that do your job. You know, if you're doing it, we keep you. If you don't, you got to go. And that's where it should be. It should be viewed upon as a privilege to work and represent the, the federal government because that's what you are. You, A lot of people don't know this, but when you become a government civilian, you have to take an oath just like when you enlist as an enlisted person or take the oath as an officer. You take an oath. Yep. So, and I, 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 th I think she get what, you know, and I, I think it's just like life. I think there's a lot of good folks out there, but unfortunately we only hear about the bad stuff. You know, we don't hear enough about the good stuff. But anyway, that's, that's something we talk about later, right? We're yeah, almost hopefully. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? We're at 30 38 minutes. Almost 39 minutes. Yeah. Yep. But either tomorrow or Tuesday, maybe you and mom can come over. We can maybe do those pizza things, and maybe we can record another episode again with, with the grandkids. Maybe Tuesday, tomorrow, I got a doctor's appointment, and your sister's going to Japan. You know, she she goes with that school. You know, she, uh, oh, so they're going during yeah. spring break. Yeah. They chaperone, look, she, she chaperones, so she's going to Japan tomorrow. and She'll be gone for about 10 days. I think it's um, maybe it was like how many days? So I take her to the airport tomorrow, and then I got my physical therapy appointment tomorrow morning. So, yeah, and in the afternoon or Tuesday. All right, so let's, well, I'll let everybody know the plan on Tuesday. We're going to do something. Okay, that'd be good. Come over and we'll see the kids and see those uh, great grandchildren for me and your grandchildren. All right. Hey, before we go, I just was looking on, on Facebook and um, periodically, you know, when I post something, 
the pictures from X amount of years ago, if it was on that date, will pop up. You know, it's like, hey, you got a memory. And it says, hey, your memory's on Facebook. Uh, we thought we'd like to look back on this post from seven years ago. And I'm clicking on the pictures. They're very fuzzy. And I'm looking at uh, Mickey Gilly. All uh, right. To see, yeah, remember the Mickey Gilly concert with, um, yep. with God, what was his name? Because it was like the 40th anniversary of. Uh, yeah. We got. Uh, 45th anniversary of. Uh, that damn movie. Urban Cowboy. Urban Cowboys. Now, right. I'm trying to think of the Urban guy who was with him. Uh, this Hispanic guy. I can't either, but yeah. guess how many years ago this was? Do I? How, guess how many years ago this was, these pictures? That you and I went to see Mickey uh, Gilly. Ten. Just take a guess. How many years? No, not that. Ten. Far. Seven. No, not that far. Five. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Can you believe it's been seven years since we saw Mickey? That just tells you how long you and I've been going to concerts together. Yep. And they're been doing fun. this a long time, haven't we? We we're gonna keep doing it too. And we've done this podcast, you know, for a year. We ain't done a year's worth of podcast, but uh, we've been doing this for a year now. Well, most of that's on me, so. But uh, I really want you to try to start eating different things when we go out to these different restaurants so we have something to laugh and joke about. We'll see. Make sure I take plenty of napkins just in case. He is the master at non-committal, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, one last thing. In the month of March, we ain't had too many downloads because, you know, we've been slacking because we ain't done any podcasts in a while. Um, one person. Camera went away. Yeah. Can you hear me? I said we yeah, had I one person you. from Spain in the last month. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. You, yeah. Your camera went away. I don't know what happened. Dad, that's happened like three or four times today. Yeah. So how many downloads we've had so far? 2,532. Okay. So well, if, we, if we get a little more consistency, we can maybe start getting into some double digits. But yeah, in the last three months, in the last three months, we've had 274 downloads, 17 from Germany, nine from the UK, three from Ecuador, one from Spain, um, three from Ecuador, three from Spain, three from New Zealand, one from Canada, one from France, one from Ireland, one from Nigeria, one from Serbia, and two from unknown. Maybe, so, yeah, Tuesday we, 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 maybe Tuesday we maybe Tuesday we can get the, those granddaughters, Isabel yeah, and Lydia, yeah. and, and maybe maybe Hannah, yeah, Hannah Banana, yeah. So maybe, Serbia, Nigeria, Ireland, France, Canada, New Zealand, Spain, Ecuador, the UK, Germany, and the US. Yeah. So we we've, we've got an international uh, audience. Yeah. I think that's probably more awesome than the number of downloads we've had. Exactly. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it, that's very neat. So maybe maybe we go maybe go to more German restaurants. We'll probably get more German people to listen to us, <laughs> especially if I eat some, eat some German food. Especially if you eat some schnitzel. <laughs> All right. All right. I love you, Dad. Love you too. Hope you Be feel good. better. I will. All right. Y'all take care, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.